Hello, this is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com coming to you on the 7th day of July 2011 here in Japan. It's the 6th of July 2011 back in Austin, where I'm joined on the line from the InfoWars Command Center by the one, the only, uh, the Alex Jones, the researcher, writer, documentary filmmaker, and radio talk show host behind InfoWars.com and PersonPlanet.tv. Alex, uh, I know you're a busy man. Thank you, as always, for taking your time out of your schedule to talk with us. Oh, it's always great to be here, my friend. Well, uh, today I wanted to talk about the idea of cloud computing, and as, uh, as I'm sure you and all of the viewers out there are aware, um, this is something that's been in the news quite a bit lately, especially now that the technocratic messiah Steve Jobs has come out and said that uh, Apple's getting into the game with the iCloud, and of course this is the idea of putting all of our personal information on the, on the internet, on inter internet-based servers hosted by third-party companies, because it's just so much easier than taking care of all of our data for ourselves. So, so this sounds like a wonderful technological nirvana that we're stepping into, Alex. What could possibly go wrong with an idea like this? Well, it's like a modern uh, form of feudalism or sharecropping where it's, you basically owe your soul to the company store. And if you go back to 2000, now 11 years ago, they would have the Internet 2 consortium meetings with the top Fortune 100, uh, 50 or so top universities around the world. And uh, the G20 uh, would, would, would get together and they openly said, this is how we're going to control the architecture of the internet. And this is how we're going to centralize it uh, and control it. And cloud computing type systems were described then, uh, though, though they weren't called cloud computing. Uh, but basically it, it, it's changing the architecture of the internet where once they phased in the cloud computing storage type systems, uh, your devices like your iPhones uh, or your laptop, your computers, they're all getting so small that they aren't even going to have uh, much storage space on them and they're not going to be able uh, to basically interface uh, with systems that are stored on traditional uh, servers. Basically, uh, what's going to happen is uh, y your information will be remotely accessed, your financial data, songs, uh, photographs, it'll all be stored uh, up on the big mega conglomerate cloud systems. You notice in the same month, last month, Microsoft, uh, uh, Google, Apple, and, and several other big IT giants all announced the move towards the cloud. And then that way they can also create uh, quasi-monopolies over data storage and then artificially uh, increase the cost because of technology's advances. Uh, memory is getting cheaper and cheaper, but in a lot of their corporate documents that are public, this is really about uh, forcing you by controlling the architecture to store your data and uh, with them. And even the Wall Street Journal and, and uh, New York Times have, have written articles about Amazon's cloud. They're really one of the pioneers of this uh, system uh, is not secure. And uh, in the contract you sign with them, you waive your rights and they can now use or look at your data uh, and, and, and share it in any way they see fit. You know, we, we wrote a story at prisonplanet.com five years ago. MySpace is the Trojan horse of internet censorship. And now it's Facebook and, and uh, other systems uh, or YouTube where, where they become the marketplace, where Google says they want to be the web. You know, Google Android wants to run your house. They want to totally control every facet of your life and the appliances are being designed to interface with it so you won't have an infowars.com or prisonplanet.com or a corbett report uh, i mean those will be available but on the old internet as they force everything over to quote internet two and basically start walling off the old internet that is the free uh and uh, open organic uh, internet so it's a very draconian centralized system and to quantify it Sure, you, you you could be on MySpace when it was big, but they could arbitrarily censor you so you couldn't send out bulletins or so you couldn't get uh, new members. That happened to us. Or YouTube, you can be number one on YouTube as we are many days, number one total, and they just don't give us the honors. You know, we can show we've had three million views, should be on the front page number one, uh, but we aren't. And, and that's going on today. Uh, where we're supposedly, you know, number one uh, in uh, the uh, news and media section. We're not even in the top 100. You can go look at it. We should be number one in the, quote, guru section. Aren't even there. 
uh, you know, somebody who's, you know, number one place has a fraction of the views we got on one of our channels. So we're getting hundreds of millions of views just on one system. And people say, well, it's, it's private. So, so why should you be complaining? The point is they say they're taking over the web. They say they're creating monopolies people can't compete with. They are the marketplace. They are the electronic, uh, town square. And they're saying that when you sign on with them, I mean, the future of the web is just these big mega conglomerates who then have their own cyber uh, ecosystems that you agree to enter on their rules. And then with government and cybersecurity and Russia is, is, is moving in the same direction, so is Europe. Uh, they're basically agreeing to start censoring and shutting down the open wall, wall west internet that, that's been the only thing growing in the global economy in the last 15 years overall. And it's a move to, to, again, start putting up blockades on those cyber roadways and forcing you on to the company store system where they can track, surveil you, where when you sign up to be able to be on it, you waive all of your rights. Uh, and so that's what this is all about. And I mean, just instinctively and in a common sense, logical level. Why would you want to store your financials somewhere else? Why would you want to store your photos somewhere else and, and not have the option to, to you know, store them yourself? Why would you uh, want them to be able to have all your information and say in the agreements that they can uh, do whatever they want? And then there's another big facet to this internet too, that cloud computing, you know, the dark storm clouds are now upon us, not on the horizon. And that's the memory hole. The internet and the printing press, you know, all of these are great technologies, but it's a double-edged sword. It can be used to spew propaganda and disinformation uh, if we don't have access to that 21st century printing press. And they can now alter, they can memory hole, they can falsely claim sites are spam or hacking uh, or, or hate uh, or gambling sites when they're not. Uh, and I've already seen that done to uh, my news websites over the years, put into the spam filters uh, and things. We had uh, YouTube on one of our channels with 120 plus million views a few weeks ago say, we're going to give you a strike. If you challenge it, uh, we may shut your channel down completely. This is a YouTube strike. Uh, uh, and we are saying you're racist for saying that Obama is a warmongering criminal. And that has been dubbed to be offensive. And I had to send them some letters and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, basically counter back that I was thinking about litigation before they took the strike away. So, so, so you can see the model of where they're going and all the statements from Lieberman and from Senator Rockefeller uh, and countless others saying we'd be better off without ever inventing an internet. This was a system that the technocrats thought they would use as a worldwide wiretap to surveil and control us. Now they realize that, that, that it's being captured by the alternative media that is fast becoming the only true media and the dominant media. In fact, I saw numbers two years ago that alternative internet had already surpassed all mainline uh, news, TV, entertainment, Hollywood, and, and that was two years ago. And so they know that people are becoming aware of this. In fact, uh, if you look at the fact that the Super Bowl on average has 65 million viewers, it's the biggest sporting event uh, or, 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 or one of the biggest in the world, 65 million viewers watch the Super Bowl and it makes hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in a single night, four or five hours. Now, not just my uh, eight or so YouTube channels now with over 300 million views, and that's just one area of where we're getting the word out. Um, number one, we don't take ads because then they can censor you even more if you do that. Uh, but I talked to other people that have big YouTube sites. I know some Second Amendment sites where their average video gets 10 million views. In, in, in fact, I know one site, it's only been up a year, it's got 150 million views. They put about a video out every week. Average video now, 10 million, growing exponentially. Uh, these folks in a uh, month are approaching the Super Bowl. Uh, and, and, but, but I talk to these sites with ads, they might for 20 million views get five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. So, so see, that's another mass mind control system uh, and, and fraud is that when you put an ad in, say, the local Austin American Statesman where I live for employees, which I've done, 300, 400 bucks to have a short ad, maybe two or three respondents, total crud. I put an ad in Craigslist 
which is for all intents and purposes free. I know they charge a little now. And I get hundreds and hundreds of responses, a lot of them good. So they, the system kind of built something that's destroying them. They thought it would be their tracking system to predict mass movements, and it has been, but all it's now predicting for them is their sure collapse uh, and demise. And uh, I got news for the social engineers. It's over. You know you can't put the genie back in the bottle. You know you can't even try to, uh, you know, ride out this revolution. Uh, and so all you can do now is try to, you know, shut down the web, and that's not going to work. People are going to find out that you're trying to censor the truth, and they're going to uh, search for it that much, that much harder. Google admittedly changed their algorithm to block content farms. Well, I mean, a lot of our stuff's original, but a lot of it is also alternative media that, you know, that we link to and the mainstream news that we then post blurbs of, that people then have debates and analyze. And so it's a college of awakening and debate. Uh, and, that, and, and the Drudge Report's the same thing. And they've said, we're changing our algorithm to target the Drudge Report, InfoWars, and sites like that. And, and now they're doing it, and they're lowering our ratings so that even our own stories won't show up. Uh, and, and I'm noticing overall Google doesn't work as well as it used to just searching for general information because they're having to start trying to tighten it down. They were very arrogant and thought that, ah, let them have, you know, let them have this Rosetta Stone of knowledge. They're too dumbed down to ever use it. But people are learning how to use it and uh, they're panicking. So they're, they're moving towards the kill switch and they're launching lots of fake cyber attacks against themselves, uh, false flags as the pretext for it. Uh, but uh, people have had a taste of true diversity and, and are outside the left to right tiny box. And uh, so the days of the elite are numbered. Well, you're exactly right, I think, in that assessment. Um, uh, it's also been happening to the, the Corbett Report YouTube channel. We have over 19,000 subscribers right now. It should put us about the 87th most subscribed channel in Japan, but for no apparent reason, they've just taken all the honors off our channel. Um, it, with the Apple iTunes Store, for no apparent reason, changed the URL on the Corbett Report podcast, uh, so it was non-functional, and then they just removed the podcast altogether, and they won't put it back up. So... Um, Oh yeah, we've we've uh, uh, we, over the years been contacted by companies, you know, that will uh, submit, and make sure it's all in the right specs, your films, uh, to the iTunes video store, you know, to get the word out. And we noticed two, three times they would refuse the Obama deception, and we had an outside company look at it. and They said you did this exactly right to the exact specs, and they were just lying over and over again and taking our thousand dollar filing fee as a sick joke and and refusing it and and you know letting our seafood rot on the dock uh you know as a way to quote you know uh, inspect it later once it had died uh, you know uh, once it had gotten rotten and, and 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 you talk about how they're doing that when i talk about how they knock us out whenever we're number 1 or even in the you know top 10 which is every day of all these different areas i say well what do you care about an honor what do you care about your trophy that you're the winner the point is we were always on news and politics and gurus and all these other channels and uh, education areas in the top 3 or 4 and that's where people that go into youtube off the front page tv guide that's how they channel surf you go to the front page and you know, out of these hundreds of millions, probably billions of videos, and you go in, a lot of people go and say, well, I want to see most viewed news and politics. You know, because it's YouTube. It's people voting by watching uh, for what they think is the most interesting. And in the past, whatever was number one was generally, you know, something that was pretty amazing. Now it's all force-fed Lady Gaga and Obama video announcements because they'll put a, an Obama video in News and Education that has a thousand views, and I'll have one that has a million in three days, and it's just nowhere there. So, so it's not just that they're taking our honors away; they're take by taking the honors away. You know, we win the soccer game, we win the football game, we win the basketball game, and we're not even in the rankings. So that when people go in there and look, they can't see. Oh, look. In, in, you know, in seven or eight categories, Alex Jones and his one channel is number one. That's what they're doing to try to dampen us. And then people argue, well, you should just leave YouTube, do an alternative. We do put our information in other places. I mean, I mean, I, I have a subscription site because I have to pay for the bandwidth, prisonplanet.tv. I lose. I've had consultants tell me, and I already know this, that I'd have more subscribers than Glenn Beck does, Glenn Beck TV, if I didn't put everything that we put there on 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 YouTube, but I do it because I care about the information. That's my passion. At the end of the day, and 
it's just so frustrating to know in the intellectual marketplace of ideas, we are winning, 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 winning. And then YouTube fraudulently violates their own rules, knocks us out of the rankings, and then pretends that they're not being evil, pretends that they're this open thing called YouTube.